Howdy! Welcome to Aspire Mountain Academy. I'm Professor Curtis, your instructor for this course in Introductory Statistics. In less than 10 minutes, this video describes the median and the mode. Let's get started. In the previous mini lecture, we examined the most commonly used measure of center, the mean. Now let's look at some other measures of center. First up, we have the median. This is the value in the data set that's right in the middle when the original data values are arranged in order from either smallest to largest or largest to smallest. It doesn't matter which way you order because either way your middle value is still in the middle. But the data set must be in order for you to find the median the old school way. We'll look at using StackCrunch to find this and all the other measures of center in a future mini lecture. For right now, just ride with this. So, the median is the data value right in the middle of an ordered data set and is often denoted with X tilde. That's because this little squiggly line on top of the X is known as a tilde. So this denotation is X tilde. Now the median has an advantage over the mean in that extreme values in the data set do not affect its value. All you're doing is looking for the value that's in the middle, which means the other values can be whatever. All the other values in the data set have no influence on what the value in the middle is, and it's for this reason we call the median a resistant measure of center. The value of the median can resist any influence of whatever the other data values are because it's not dependent upon the values that are in the data set. It doesn't have the sensitivity that the mean value has to extreme values like outliers. Now, calculating the median old school style is very easy. First, you sort your data. Again, it doesn't matter where you go from low to high or high to low, but you have to sort the data first. Then you identify the middle of the data set. The value that's in the middle is your median value. Now, you might be thinking that this works great if you have an odd number of data values in your data set, but a data set with an even number of values won't have just one value right in the middle. What do you do then? Well, let's look at that. First, Let's go through the procedure with a data set that has an odd number of values. So here we've got seven data points in our set. So first, to calculate the median, we're going to sort them in order, and I'm just choosing from low to high. Again, it doesn't matter which way you sort, but it is helpful if you just pick one way and then adopt that as your convention, but doing it every time. Going from low to high is just the direction I choose for myself. Now I'm going to pick the data value that's in the middle of the data set. That's going to be this value here, which is 0.73. Notice I have the same number of data values on either side of this middle value. Because there's only one value that's here in the middle, this then is the median for this sample data set. However, if your data set has an even number of total values, then you're going to have two values in the middle. And so what you do then is just average those two values. Let's look at the same data set, only let's remove the last data value. So <clears throat> this gives us an even number of data values. Okay, now when we sort them in order and then look for the value in the middle, we find we have two. This presents a problem. If we choose just the 0.66, then we're going to have two values on the left and three values on the right. Like obviously if we choose 1.10, then we're going to have three values on the left and two values on the right. And that's why we average both of these values to get the median. That way we get a middle value with the same number of data values on each side of it in the set. So averaging 0.66 and 1.10 gives 0.88. And so 0.88 is then the median of the data set, even though 0.88 is not an actual value in the data set itself. The mode is another measure of center, and the mode of a data set is simply that value which occurs with the greatest frequency. This definition makes the mode a different measure of center because you can have one mode, more than one mode, or just simply no mode at all. Now, when a data set has two values that occur with the same greatest frequency, we call that data set bimodal because it has two modes. The prefix bi means two. 
Now, if you have a data set that has more than two values that occur with the same greatest frequency, then you have what's called a multimodal data set. And then you also have data sets that have no mode. In other words, there's no single data value that is repeated more than any other. There's no special name for this situation. Now, obviously, if you have a data set with every value not being repeated, and each appears only once in the data set, then your data set will have no mode. However, if every data set is repeated once, then every data value in the data set still occurs with the same greatest frequency. Again, there is no mode. Now, here's an important point that you need to remember. The mode is the only measure of central tendency that can be used with nominal data. This should make sense, provided you remember what nominal data are. You do remember that, right? Nominal data is categorical data with no natural order to it. You can take the mode for nominal data because you're just looking at which category occurs with the most frequency. Now, if you have ordinal data, your data are still categorical but can be placed in some natural order or sequence. We've seen examples of that where we use numbers as labels for different categories. But your data are numerical. So because they're numerical, you could calculate the mean and the median, but the numbers wouldn't mean anything because your data are categorical. Only the mode would have any real meaning for categorical data. Now, calculating the mode is really easy. Just look for the number in the data set that has the greatest frequency. Here in this first example, we've got 5.4, 1 1.1, 1 0.42, 0.73, 0 0.48, and 1.1. 1 .1. Now, let's look at each of these numbers one by one. The first value, 5.4, is not repeated. But 1.1 1 .1 is repeated once. So now 1.1 .1 is in the lead with a count of 2. 0.42 is not repeated, 0.73 is not repeated, 0.48 is not repeated. So the only value in this data set that's repeated is 1.1, and therefore this is the mode for this data set. Let's look at another example. Here we've got 27, 27, 27, 55, 55, 55, 88, 88, 99. Looking at this data set, we can see that 27 appears three times, 55 appears three times, 88 appears twice, and 99 appears once. The greatest frequency is 3. And since we have two data values with that frequency count, 27 and 55, that means that both 27 and 55 are the mode of this data set. This is an example of a bimodal data set. The mode is both of these numbers together, 27 and 55. Let's take a look now at this data set. 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 14. None of these numbers are repeated. Every number in this data set appears only once. Therefore, because every number in the data set appears with the same greatest frequency of one count, there is no mode to this data set. By definition, a data set in which every value in the data set appears just as frequently as any other value in the data set has no mode. And that brings us to the end of this mini lecture. I hope you found it helpful. You can find more mini lectures for this and other courses at AspireMountainAcademy.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.